midst of this worship. We need your healing touch. In the midst of our worship, we know it's by grace. We know it's by mercy. You may be standing in for another, and the Lord will hear your prayer. You may be raising your hands in praise, putting a demand upon heaven. For he is near, and he is here. It's breaking out, 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 Jesus. So swing wide, ye gates. Swing wide. Well, swing wide, ye gates. The King of glory. that the King of Glory is here moving in our midst jumping into our hearts occupying a greater space in me Jesus I need you Jesus I want are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you sing that again you are here moving in our midst i worship you i worship you you are here working in this place i worship you i worship you you are we make a miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are we make a miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are here touching every heart I worship you I worship you and you are here healing every heart I worship you I worship you let's sing it again you are here touching every heart come on declare it i worship you i 
want to share what I saw as we were singing this song. When we were singing, um, even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I don't feel you, you're working. I saw a, a, a big, huge group of people and they were walking forward and they were literally just chanting it. They were just chanting as they were walking forward and they were walking forward and they were walking forward. Even when we don't see you, you're working. Even when we don't feel you, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. And they were fierce and they were the bride of Christ. And they were saying, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, you never stop working. And it's a lie. And I'm telling you right now, with God as my witness, and I, I'm not this way. <laughs> I'm telling you with God as my witness, the enemy has placed str strategic things in our life that we are not seeing breakthrough in. And he is trying to take that one thing or those two things, and he is trying to build a case against my God. And he is trying to say, it's not working. He's not working. It's a lie. It's a lie. You believe this too long. It's a lie. You need to stop and you need to find a better way because not true and he is a liar and as soon as we take our place as soon as we start moving forward and advancing and say it's a lie even when I don't see you even when I don't feel you you never stop working so bride of Christ I admonish you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ take your stand and I am the weakest wimpiest little person in the world but I'm going to take my stand I'm Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Oh! 
So right before Annie came up, and we were over here just entering into worship, and I felt this just amazing, just deep presence of the Lord. And I felt myself kind of lifting up. I don't know how to explain that, but like lifting up, and I saw an eye like in the heavens. And I thought, oh my gosh, like it's the Lord, like, you know, seeking out who who is following him. And and all of a sudden the eye shifted and I saw a lion. This, I'm not like, I don't see these kind of things like this. I saw a lion turn. Like it was like I saw the one eye of a lion. And all of a sudden I saw the shift of a turn of his head. And I saw his eyes shift straight forward. And I thought, oh my gosh, like the Lord is asking us to like follow him and move forward, like advance in the kingdom. And, and, and all of a sudden I thought, there's so many in the room that have kind of, it's not like God isn't working, it's that we aren't actually working. And so I said, Lord, I wanna like, just bring me back to that place, Lord, where, I am, where I'm not working against what you're doing. Cause like we can work against what he's doing. And then I just saw like repentance as like a key. And when we say we're sorry, like no matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, we can literally stop at that very moment and we can shift and turn and look back to Jesus. And we hand in the key when we say, when we give him permission and we, we repent, whatever it takes to get that permission given. And once the key is given, it's just all about steady ahead, you know, following Jesus. And so, I just want to say, if you have felt like other things have kept you from following him, or you just feel like you just don't have the, that life you need inside, it's as simple as just turning around, giving him permission, repenting or whatever you need to do to get right with the father again, and just following him because he's ready to take you someplace that you've never been before. So Father, I ask right now that we would give you permission. We're open to your spirit. We're open to what you want to do in our lives, God. And we give you actual permission and we repent, Lord, for for holding back anything of shame, anything of pain, anything of that would hold us back from you, knowing that you're not looking at that thing very long because you already dealt with it. You just want us to turn and give permission. So Lord, we grant you permission and we ask this open heaven that I do really feel like there is an open heaven over this um, place today that we've stirred it up in the spirit. Lord, I ask that it would just remain. It would just remain in the name of Jesus. Amen. I think we need to respond to that, church. between you and him. Your heart and his is between you and Jesus. Go into your secret place where you bury your face. started the service by surrendering it all. So right now, just let the Lord do business with you.
really hoping and praying that I don't mess this up because this is a very special moment. And I feel like that there's something that God's trying to do and I just want to encourage it. I don't want to discourage it. I've never asked the band to do this or maybe I haven't asked in a long time. If you guys could just hang for a second, just hold on. I just want to share a scripture and a thought. Maybe, maybe part of online today is even, you know, if you're here today, you could text someone and just say, you need to jump online right now. <clears throat> maybe if you're online, maybe you should call everybody into the living room or wherever you're at. I want to read a verse that has shaken my spirit this week. It's found in Psalm 25, verse number 14. Because I really feel that the Lord is trying to do something in our day and our time in his church. We've been crying out for a move of God in our world. So in this beautiful verse, there's a challenge and a promise. And Psalm 25, verse number 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. He will show them his covenant. 3,000 years ago, God spoke to David and he said, I have a secret and I'll share it with those who fear him. And I feel the Lord calling the church back to the fear of God. And that's not my normal go-to. I'm a mercy guy, but I'm also very concerned. And I'm reminded that the good news of Jesus Christ as presented by the Apostle Paul starts with the wrath of God before he tells the good news. So I just wanna remind us what fear looks like, the fear of God. I've said for years, you know, I don't think God's calling us to be afraid of him. I think he's calling us to reverence him. Till I've had a few experiences where I actually said, you know what, I fear God. I fear standing before him empty handed. I feel fear standing before him having done all this and not have dealt with the heart of the issue. So, so that we can be reminded and put this in context, where was David's reference when he used the fear of God? What was the, what was the Jewish mind? There were two events. One of them was when God delivered Israel from Egypt. The fear of God fell on Israel as God dealt with their enemies. And from that point on, I mean, they, they understood that God is a consuming fire. And God taught them how to build a tabernacle, how to build a, an ark, which would be a throne, which would be a, the presence of God among them. And he taught them how to do sacrifice and how to approach God. And he created a priesthood and he robed them and garmented them and taught them and there was this one day when Aaron's sons did something. We don't know exactly what. We don't, I mean, all it says is they brought strange fire. And it probably means it was just fire that hadn't fall, fallen from the heavens. It was just other fire. There is a reference to not drinking and intoxication for Aaron and his children. But this story goes something like this. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it and offered profane fire, common, ordinary fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. 
before you say like, but that was in the old covenant. You know, this happened to Ananias and Sapphira in the new covenant. And Moses said to Aaron, this, this is the point. Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke saying by those who come near me. I must be regarded as holy and before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. Aaron watched his sons die before the Lord performing their task, but in a way that apparently dishonored God. Moses said to Aaron and Eliezer and Ithmar, his sons, do not uncover your heads nor tear your clothes lest you die and wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of meeting lest you die for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. And then the Lord spoke to Aaron saying, do not drink wine or intoxicating drink you or your sons with you when you go into the tabernacle of meeting lest you die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation that you may distinguish between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean, and that you may teach your children all the statutes with which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. Brothers and sisters, I stand before you today and I feel like I could prophesy $6 a gallon is coming. I believe with all my heart that's coming. I think that it's going to be very, very rough. And it's not the Democrats, it's not the Republicans. There's no political answer. There's a spiritual answer. God is looking at his people, if my people, who are called by my name, if they humble themselves, if they seek my face, if they turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. I believe this is a day where the Lord wants us to remember the fear of God. And when the fear of God becomes our, our bottom line, it's like, okay, we stop arguing with God. We start, uh, stop arguing with each other. We just say, the will of the Lord be done, you know. When that becomes our, our bottom line, David says that the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. The Lord sent me here today to call this church, to call our city, to call our nation back to the fear of the Lord, to return to reverencing and honoring him, to give up on your own thoughts and your own ways, give up on your own plans and your own ideas, and all your bickering and fighting and complaining and return to God. This is not the message I wanna be sharing with you. Let me share just a verse that I wanna share with you. It's found in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, had a vision, he called on Peter. Peter had just had a revelation. He goes to this Gentile's house. This Gentile's house, I mean, clean and unclean, this is like the epitome of it. He walks into Cornelius's house and he's, as he begins to wonder why it is that God's called him into a Gentile's house. This man's outside of the covenant of God. And Peter could call him to his house. His house was kosher, but this man's house was epitomized by uncleanness. Cornelius falls before Peter and he says to him, he says, stand up, I myself am also a man. He, he talked with him. He went in and found many who had come together. And he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for me, a Jewish man, to keep company with you to go of one, from one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without 
objection. And he says, so what do you want, Cornelius? And Cornelius says, I had this dream, and you were coming, and you sharing. So Peter says, all I know, all I know is this, <clears throat> Jesus. And he begins preaching Jesus and the repentance that comes and the faith that comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter begins to open his mouth and he says, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Whoever fears God and works righteousness will be accepted. And the word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Would you stand up with me? I don't know if you... I've pondered this a long time, but the secret of the Lord that he shares with those who fear him and those who keep covenant. <laughs> Here's the secret. Jesus is Lord of all. There is no such thing as clean and unclean after God has cleansed them. He is Lord of all. But that means that you and I are not Lord at all. He is Lord of all. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask Gary to continue singing the song. And we have a time to come and present ourselves to the Lord. Let's come and say, God, restore the holy reverence and fear of God to us and our children our churches, and our nation so that God can do a deep work in us and we can walk out of here and say, it doesn't matter who you are, what color, what, what educational background, where you hail from. It doesn't matter any of those things. What matters is, will you fear God and begin to work righteousness? Will you follow Jesus? Will you follow God? Will you... Commit your heart and your way to him. And as you're coming, I just want to remind you that my mind remembers there was a revival in the Hebrides that began with this verse. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And with those he shares his covenant. And thousands were saved on a single island in a single night. And it went from island to island and place to place. So don't try to count the people in this room or the people online and figure out what God is doing right now. God is trying to do something and he's trying to start with you and with me. <clears throat> As musicians lead us back into worship, I'm going to invite you to come and we're going to present ourselves. This is like the hard part. This is what we got to do. You got to repent if you want to receive grace. You've got to come if you want him to come. You've got to surrender if you want him to reveal himself. You and I need to come to a place where we understand that we represent him and we have to re represent him better than we've been. Is there anyone understanding what I'm saying right now? This is a time of repentance. This is a time for us to come before the Lord and say, oh God, I pray for the blessing I pray for the blessing of your people returning to an understanding of the fear of God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we would remember that the wrath of God that we were saved from cost Jesus his blood, his life. So we present our life. We present our Come today and say, Lord, here am I. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here we are. We're coming to return to him and to the fear of the Lord. I'm not sure what you're going to do, Lord. Even though I don't know and don't see what you're doing right now, I believe you. I trust you. And I'm asking that you would bring us to the place where we reverence God. And when God speaks, we listen. When he gives us a word of knowledge, when he gives us a word of prophecy, we hear and we're not so 
condition to it that we just ignore it and let it pass by. We open the book and we see the words and we respond to you. Oh God, as for me and this house, Lord, we repent before you and we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would lead us by the hand, that you would lead us by your spirit. There's a people, Lord, right here today in Warmley's Print, Pennsylvania, and you've arrested us, you've caught us, you've drawn, drawn us, and there's something we knew. We couldn't put our finger on it. There's something wrong, and we couldn't say it, but we know today we, we've, we've become casual with God. We've become casual with grace. We've become so casual with you. Would you begin to restore the fear of God to your people? so that we walk in reverence, we walk in purity, we walk in sobriety, we walk, Lord Jesus, in holiness, we walk in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hear the Spirit of God saying this world is spending billions of dollars to try to look a little younger, to try to look a little prettier. But the Spirit of God is saying there's a beauty and holiness that you cannot sell, you cannot buy. It is only found in repentance. There's a beauty and holiness that only comes in the presence of Almighty God. There's a beauty and holiness that causes you to be clean and cleansed on the inside and on the outside. And what is on the inside begins to be reflected out through. And you begin to shine as stars. You begin to shine. Is there anyone besides me feeling right now we could just use a bath in the Holy Spirit. We live among an unclean people. We live in an unclean nation, Lord Jesus. We live among people with unclean lips and unclean hearts, and they've rubbed off, off on us, and we need your cleansing again. And the cleansing of God will take away every sin and every stain. It will take away all the guilt. It will take away all the shame. Oh, God, we cry out to you, cleanse us. So come, even so come, so come, oh love, even so come, 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 even Like if there's something you need to confess, just find someone. Don't leave this room with unconfessed sin. Confess it to the Lord. Confess it to someone. Let them pray. I promise they will be compassionate. They will not be judgmental. They'll put their arm around you and they'll hear your confession. Oh, come. Oh, come.
speak to those who are in the room and also to those who are watching online. I'm just going to tell you my own testimony is that growing up in the church, um, I might have been in a thousand services, I'm not sure, but I remember one particular night the pastor came to me and found me. And everybody thought I knew Jesus. Everybody thought I was saved, but he came to me and he said, what about you, Rich? Would you like to receive Christ as your Savior? And that's all I was waiting for. And I accepted Christ that night. I accepted him, and it stuck. Maybe you're here today, maybe you're watching online, and you're saying, everybody thinks I'm a believer, but I know in my heart I'm not. Everybody assumes that I'm a Christian, but I'm not. This is your opportunity to accept Jesus right here, right now. Consider this the pastor coming to you at the altar call and saying, what about you, sir? What about you, ma'am? Would you receive Christ today? If you will, you need to only know that he's already received you. It's just one step. Just turn around. Face him. moment you turn around, he'll catch you. He'll receive you. He'll bring you home. Accept Jesus today. If you're backslidden, you know it. It's like the Spirit of God and services like this no longer move you anymore. You don't feel any sense of the nearness of God. You, your, your heart is cold. Let me tell you something. Jesus is married to you. He is married to you. He said to Israel, you're backslidden, but I'm married to you. I am married to you. So you may as well return to him because he doesn't consider it to be a divorce. He considers it to be, well, we're just breaking our vows. Let's come back to him. Let's return. If you are backslidden right now, let's return to the Lord. Let's come and say, Lord, I just, I have to tell you what you already know. I need to tell you my heart is cold. My life is growing in the wrong direction. I'm walking away from you. I've been walking away. Compromise my testimony. I've compromised my faith. I've compromised everything. And Jesus open arms says, why don't you just turn around and come home? Come back. Come back home. Come back home. Come to Jesus. 
come to Jesus. I'm going to invite everybody to stand up if you can. Stand up with me. And I need to do something here. If you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, if you've repented, if you've come and said, God, restore the fear of God to my heart, if you've come burdened and heavy laden, okay, I got to tell you what happened. Earlier this week, I woke up in the morning and the Lord just put this word in my heart. He said, fresh start. And I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Fresh start. This is it. I didn't realize it until just a moment ago. This is the fresh start. Here, I want to read something to you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful, he's just. <clears throat> He will accept anyone. God is not partial. Anyone, anywhere, anytime. I want this to burn in your heart when you're walking to the grocery store, when you're walking to school, when you're walking somewhere to your car. It happened to me the other day. Someone walks up to you and they walk up to you. <clears throat> in that moment, he asked for prayer. <clears throat> When the Lord begins to work in your life and begins to take us by the hand, then when anyone comes and you come to them or they come to you, you can say, I know for certain Jesus will accept anyone. He is impartial. Whoever fears God and works righteousness will be accepted. No, no no limits. There's no limits. Whoever fears God and works righteousness will be accepted. Anyone. Doesn't matter if you know your gender. It doesn't matter if you're not sure of your gender. He will accept you. He'll accept anyone. When you return to the fear of the Lord and begin to work righteousness or walk in some kind of way. Church, this is our fresh start. God will build on this day in your life, in our lives. He will build on this from this day forward. I'm going to ask Linda. Linda, I think you need to come and pray. I think you need to come and lead us in prayer. While she's uh, warming up here, I'm just going to ask, guys, if we can do one more worship song. I think we need to go out worshiping him. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we got pray for right. Celestial being, come here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Celeste is going to the Mojave Desert or someplace we can't know about. <laughs> <clears throat> I told her this morning that Jesus will be in the desert. He's already been there before. And we just want to extend our hands towards her and just to pray blessings over her as she lives out her testimony. She has a lot of people in the military that she loves, their friends, their families. And I'm asking the Lord to give her all those friends. Their lives, their, Lord, let them come home with testimonies. Father, we thank you for Celeste. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for her testimony. We pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that even though she will be at times probably tested to the limit, I ask you, Lord, when she's about ready to give up, that you would pick her up and strengthen her. I'm asking, Lord Jesus, there's going to be some people who are going to want to party. There's going to be some people who are going to want to celebrate in all kinds of ways. And they will feel justified in it because they did a hard thing. I pray, Lord Jesus, that Celeste's celebration will be the lives that you have given her in the process. And how you have protected her and how you have sustained her. And how you have kept her. And I know that there's this, like... I will be sort of feeling disconnected from my people 
but your people will not be disconnected from you. We'll hold you up in prayer. There will be a church praying for you till you return to us. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Yes, you will miss this, but I promise you, Jesus will be with you in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Yeah. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just want to say one thing about the wilderness, you know, like that was where Israel failed, but Jesus succeeded where they failed. So he's been in the desert before. He knows how to help you to succeed. So you're going to want to read the first four chapters of Luke, a time or two. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you pray through me. <laughs> this has been an amazing service. And so, so, Father, thank you that you love us, that you've given us everything we need, even if we can't see it. <laughs> We know that you've provided for us. I ask that as we go out today, that we would, that fear of the reward would be developed in us if we don't have any. If we already have a fear of the Lord, that it would be even stronger. That we would walk knowing that you are a holy God. There is none like you. You are the only true and living God. That we would remember that every waking moment. That you're the God who, who cares for us, who counted the hairs on our head. You're the God who sent his only son for us. So God, I ask that you would I know that the Pentecost is coming, yeah. but I'm asking ahead of time yeah. that you would fill us yes. with your fire, yes. with your power, yes. that we would have yes. words in season and out of season, Father God, that we wouldn't be afraid to talk to anyone, Hallelujah. that we would be more afraid of you <laughs> than Jesus. we are of a stranger or our enemy. And God, that we would preach the word in love, but we would preach the word. We would give the testimony of Jesus, our risen Savior. So I thank you, Father God, for every person here, every person watching online. I ask that you that set your angels in charge over us, that we would go out rejoicing today. And the first person we meet, we would just say, Jesus loves you. We would tell them that Jesus loves them and that there's an excellent way to live. So we just, we just, I just, I just can't even, words fail me. So you're such an amazing God. And Father, that we remember that every day this week. And as we come back to worship you next week together corporately, where there's such power in that, Father, that we would find somebody to lead to the Lord this week Amen. or pray for healing or just hug them That's right. because they need a hug from God. So Father, thank you. Thank you for this amazing place. Thank you for being such an amazing God. In Jesus' name, amen. I also had an impression that, uh, you know, there's actually a couple kinds of fear, right? There's the fear that the enemy stirs up in you. Now, I believe that we need to set that, that fear aside, okay? And that we need, as we go out, set that fear from the enemy aside and grab hold of the fear of God. Go ahead, Jim. We're going to... 
So the uh, fear of God will destroy every other fear. Amen. I left my fear by the side of the road. I left my fear by the side of the road. I hear you speak. I won't let go. Fall to my knees as I lift my hands to pray. All I 
need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you. All I need is you, Lord, is you. Yeah. 